A few weeks ago, Apple announced their plans to stop supporting progressive web apps, or PWAs, for iOS 17.4 users in the EU. Since then, they backed down on this, with caveats that I'm not gonna go into in this video. But the whole experience showed me that I didn't really know a lot about PWAs myself. And when I went looking for more information, I found that there wasn't much out there aimed at normal people. Most of the content about PWAs is for developers or companies. So I did what any nerd with a network of other nerds and a burning curiosity would do. I rolled up my sleeves, opened my browser, and got to work. Let's talk about what I found. So first off, what are PWAs? To put it in layman's terms, PWAs are simply websites that are able to behave like apps on your device. I'm not gonna go into technical detail for lots of reasons, but I wanna emphasize that this is not the same as saving a website on your phone's homepage. There are actual technical behind the scenes changes made by the developers that explicitly give PWAs more functionality than a typical web page. Things like being able to support push notifications and to store user data offline like a native app. So why would you, the phone user, be interested in a PWA instead of a native app? Well, for starters, PWAs typically use a lot less storage than a native app. According to my research, there is no hard limit on the size of a PWA, but your phone's browser is limited to using only a certain percentage of storage space, which does put a practical limit on PWA size. Furthermore, developers are incentivized to make their PWA smaller so that they load faster, perform better, and take up less space so that users don't feel like they need to delete the app to make room for other stuff. And as an added bonus, because PWAs are smaller, they tend to use less data, which can save you money on your phone plan. PWAs also offer some advantages for privacy and security. On the security front, PWAs benefit from running within the browser's sandbox, which has come pretty far these days, especially for Chromium-based browsers like Brave. Service workers, which PWAs use to enable notifications, also benefit from that same sandboxing. And because PWAs run in the browser, they also benefit from things like guaranteed use of TLS, content security policies, and same origin policies, which can help restrict cross-site tracking and loading things from other websites. This is already getting way too technical for my usual type of content, so let me just summarize by saying that while native apps do benefit from having actual permission toggles on the phone's settings, which have also come a long way, PWAs get security benefits from the browser security model. This is also helpful in limiting any malicious apps because they don't have the same system access as a native app would. To be clear though, PWAs are not some magic panacea. There are some use cases where native apps are definitely superior. For example, performance. Native apps will always have the edge when it comes to features and performance because they are designed specifically for both the phone and the use case. A website has to be cross-platform, while a native app can be tailored exactly to that phone's hardware and OS for maximum optimization. Probably the other biggest advantage of a native app is that typically apps need to be vetted in some way before being pushed to the app store. This isn't foolproof. We see malicious apps all the time on Google Play, and while they're less common on the Apple App Store, they're not unheard of there either. But generally speaking, anyone can go online and make a PWA. Making an app, on the other hand, requires at least some degree of oversight if you're gonna push it through traditional channels. Of course, as any good nerd knows, reading about something and doing it are not the same. So while I did do some research on PWAs, the real question here is, but are they worth using? So to answer that question, I decided to try out some PWAs myself, and the results were surprising. Let's start with Android. Android has a few things going for it in the PWA department. For example, on Android, you can use other browser engines, including Chromium-based browsers like Brave, so that you actually get all those security benefits that I mentioned earlier. Android browsers also make it really easy to know which pages are PWAs because in the menu, you will be asked to install the app instead of simply bookmarking the page. However, because of the way that Android browsers typically handle web history, if you're like me and you prefer to keep your history clean, you'll struggle on this platform. Everything I did in the PWAs stayed in my browser history, and I found myself constantly accidentally logging myself out of my PWAs because I was trying to clear my browser data, and it would take my PWA logins with it. While iPhone can lay claim to a greater number of PWAs at this time, it's not without drawbacks. For example, if you have lockdown mode enabled, which I think most people should at least try out because it's really not that inconvenient, PWAs are just off the table entirely. And of course, this isn't noted anywhere in Apple's documentation. The other biggest limitation is that Apple never gives you the option to install a PWA. Instead, it simply gives you the option to add to home screen, which is the same option it gives you for literally every single website. So it can be really hard to tell which sites are actually PWAs and which ones are just bookmarks. You're either gonna have to experiment and see or check one of those websites that lists known PWAs. That said, in my testing, Apple provided by far the better experience because you have so many more options and clearing your web data doesn't log you out and what you do in the PWAs doesn't stay in your Safari history. Regardless of which operating system you use, you are likely to run into limitations. As I said before, PWAs cannot take full advantage of the hardware the same way that native apps can. So in some cases, this is simply a non-starter. Now, admittedly, I only had a few apps to test with here because I just don't use a lot of apps, especially the ones most people do. 
But with Google Maps, for example, GPS just straight up doesn't work. So you cannot get real time turn by turn directions. And with Jellyfin, I found that many of my videos weren't stable, especially at double speed, which is a thing I sometimes do even with video because I'm weird. Granted, that's probably kind of a niche use case, but it's an example. Reddit, on the other hand, doesn't offer the chat feature, which some users may not care about, but other users may want. And it's worth noting that Reddit is an example of one of those iOS only PWAs. It's not a PWA on Android. Mastodon never sent me notifications, despite me checking in multiple places on my phone that notifications were indeed enabled, and Duolingo sometimes just straight up refused to play audio, which you kind of need for some of the exercises. So what's the final verdict? Is it worth trying to replace all your native apps with PWAs? On iOS, I would have to give an unequivocal yes. The way that Safari handles PWA is by letting you clear your data but stay logged in is incredible in my opinion. And because Apple already supports so many PWAs as it is, there's just so much opportunity here. Just be warned that like I said earlier, you're probably gonna have to do a lot of research or experimenting or both to figure out which sites are PWAs, which ones aren't, and you may end up finding that some are simply missing crucial functionality. But like I said, you have a lot more options here. And for the native apps that you can replace with PWAs, I think Apple provides a really smooth experience and you're gonna get a pretty decent boost to your privacy and security in the process. For Android users, on the other hand, I'm gonna have to give a less enthusiastic, I'd recommend checking it out. As I said earlier, I don't like keeping my browser data and I don't recommend that anyone should do it. However, if you're one of those people who likes keeping your browser history and stuff like that, or your browser history has a setting to only keep data for certain sites while clearing other sites, then that was kind of my biggest complaint and you should definitely check it out. I also just want to caveat by saying that a lot of the testing that I did hands-on took place over like a week, maybe a little less. So some of the issues that I found, like the notification thing on Mastodon, could very possibly be user error on my end. You might have a better experience once you start diving in. Ultimately though, you really have nothing to lose by testing PWAs. You don't have to delete the app off your phone to use the PWA. So you could even use it as a workaround for having multiple accounts for certain apps. Ultimately, I recommend you guys check it out for yourselves, but just know that you're gonna have to lower your expectations a little bit. Even in the best performing apps, I did notice a hit. Again, like Jellyfin and Duolingo. Even when Duolingo was working right, it was a little slow. So if you absolutely have to have the best performance and all the bells and whistles, native apps are gonna be the best for you. But if you're willing to take a little bit of a hit and do some experimenting to dial it in and get it just right, PWAs can really offer a more private and secure, light experience for your app usage where available. Ultimately, as with most things, it's up to you and your threat model and your needs, but hopefully I've at least helped to make this topic a little bit more accessible. Real quick before I go, I wanna give a huge thanks to Kerry Parker of Firewalls Don't Stop Dragons and Jonah Aragon of Privacy Guides for fact-checking the whole what are PWA section of this video. If you somehow have not heard of those two, you should definitely check them out. Like I said, there's really not a lot of good information out there written in plain English. And being that I don't have a deep technical background, it was kind of hard for me to make sense of some of this stuff. So I appreciate Carrie and Jonah taking the time to lend their experience and expertise to help keep my content accurate. I will go ahead and leave some links to some of their projects in the show notes so you can go check them out. On that note, I really want to drive home that there is a serious lack of newbie-friendly information out there about PWAs. So if you are an actual expert or even just more knowledgeable than I am about this particular subject, which for the record is a super low bar, first off, please let me know if I got anything wrong. I will try to update this video if I made any serious mistakes. Second, please contribute in your own way. If you make videos, please make a video about this topic. If you have a blog, write a blog post. PWAs get recommended a lot in the privacy space, but it's hard to find any accessible, easy to read information out there about them based on my research. So again, if you have any expertise on this topic and a platform where you can do so, please contribute something to help explain this stuff to others. There is literally room for everyone here because the space is empty. Your voice could be what helps someone like me or your loved ones understand this stuff better. Thank you guys again for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I will see you in the next video.